Uh, what's going on YouTube? Uh, welcome back to the Navi Halo YouTube channel. Uh, as you can see here, we have a kind of like a review and an in detail, in detailed kind of tips and tricks uh, of one of our scrim games on uh, Bizarre CTF. Um, and obviously we've got all of us here. As you can show, I'm sure you can see, you've got all four of us here to be here to go into detail and look at a scrim. This is uh, versus Quadrant, uh, you know, a couple of weeks leading up to Kansas City Major. So, um, yeah, we'll get straight into it. Unfortunately, for some reason, Kimbo is on the other team uh, in this review. So we'll try and work around that, you know, playing free for free. But uh, yeah, we'll get into this one off of our silent strat. I don't know if you uh, want to go into this one, Perry. Uh, so to be fair, Bazaar's a lot like a lot of the infinite maps. Uh, the opener is just genuinely a fight to, to fight for map control. Because obviously a lot of the maps on this game, there are a lot of power-ups of spawn. So like the OS is up of spawn. If you don't know, the overshield gives you basically double health. And then the rockets, which are, I think your mum and dad could get a kill with the rockets on this game. So that's how important they are to be fighting for. So, uh, so yeah, our opener is we fight quite heavy on both sides because we don't want to fight for one because we know that the other one can... So basically, an OS can beat rockets, rockets can beat OS. So we need to have like some sort of like output on both sides. So yeah, we kind of fight quite heavy on top. Uh, obviously, I think respectful and Kimbo are the players that tend to like fight for me and Jimbo to get out. So it's kind of luck of the draw of me and Jimbo get out. I'm flying then, what the fuck? So you can see yeah. from this start was not the best for us. We got, I mean, I burnt the OS, but I think. We uh, died pretty easily off the style. I think it can get worse, to be fair. Like, as long yeah. as they don't have, uh, have it. Four up and everything. Yeah, you dead, DOS. So, we won one out of two there. So, coming off spawn, we're, we're, they've now got the control to be pushing us. So, as a team, you can see, like, we're trying to clear our base. So, th this is one of the hardest maps to cap a flag. Like, genuinely, it is. Just because as of, like, team, how many people you have yeah. to kill and what you have to hold. Everyone has to do his job on this. Like, if someone doesn't do his job, he will not cap a flag, I'm pretty sure. So if you want to take it back, Jim, we can see the number control in the middle there. So we fight out from our base. So oh, from, from after the, uh, from the break. After we'll go to so you. We're the, so we're the defending team now. They're the pushing team. They just got a post up. Just play for a kill. The yeah, outline's on staying on. So obviously they have rockets and stuff like that. So we, like I said, we're just trying to post up and just trying to find a kill together. You see there that two fox team respectful double team a guy just to get out of the base, avoid the rocket player because obviously the rockets are uh, obviously flying us and it's kind of hard to avoid them. Like I said, them. But right now it's like they're on our flag. We don't have to necessarily go back. We can either we can either have a decision of whether we go forward and try and kill the spawners, the players that we did just kill, or we go back and try and defend the mid map uh, away from the flag runner. Um, as you can see, we kind of all as a team kind of collectively said, hey, screw this guy that's on our side. We're going to go yeah, and We haven't mentioned kill. it yet as well. That like this, this side that we're on, this this right side, uh, this is the side which is a lot easier. So we basically decide, me and Jimbo, we're taking this right side. If you want to run a flag, you will either come through us or you got to go the bad side, which we'll get to the spawns in a bit where you'll see why they're such bad spawns, like the lower side of the map. So we make the decision, we take the top side, which gives our teammates the top side. And we almost play for a standoff. You'll see it as it plays out. And right here we're just <clears throat> right here we're just playing for everyone to just get cross. As you can see, Jimbo laying down some shots. So like I say, I'll kinda of pause it here and this is what we're kinda of playing this higher side. You see SLG from Quadrant is like on this lower side. You have Kimbo on a higher side. Respectful. Uh, so imagine picturing, picturing the map half and half. We're taking the right side, they're taking the left side. Yeah, imagine there's this line straight down the middle here where it's we are on the higher side of the map, whereas they're kind of down here in these lower pit areas, like shotgun areas. So we're kind of just like, okay, you have that. So you can see how like there, this whole line, all those red right there are them, are the enemies. We're just like, okay, you have that lower side because they're running the flag, we'll trade for the higher side. Obviously that red icon there is actually Kimbo, but it's bugged out. They're literally just dumbing it down. We've we've given the worst possible possible spawns. They've that they've got to make the decision: do they want to fight us or do they want to run their flag the harder route? And right now, at this point, like I say, we're in a stack, we're flag standoff, right? So we have maintained map control by uh, two foxy leaving the flag there for a spawner to deal with. 
uh, as we probably see if it'll let me go back. We'll see that he threw the flag back here, right? You know, we have the whole map right now. We know there's not anyone behind us and the spawner can deal with the touch and we're just maintaining map control, um, you know, to make a kind of organized push towards the enemy base. As you can see, I'm on this side of the map. Um, yeah, like we said, like the whole map's about keeping the map uh, because you get rockets and overshield and yeah, easy. It just makes the game easy mode if you can get in their base with everything. So like now they're all kind of backed up. They get a good little push out at this point. I'm trying to draw them back. Don't let them go to my my base. They're scared about their own return. It's like although Two Foxy died there, like you said, then he's brought two of them back, right? So that allows uh, myself, respectful and Kimbo, basically a three v two to get back into the map. Um, which obviously looks like we pick off a player right there, uh, and then there's a two v one on this kind of play here. So it just shows how like, it, yeah, okay, you may have seen two Foxy just went off by himself, right? But he's kind of like making the best of a bad situation. Myself and Respectful died in the mid-map. You know, that trade didn't That's go away. That's just some tips in terms of like, you got to think numbers. My life was worth two of those, yeah. meaning a freebie two on my side. So again, we're coming off spawn. We're going to play that 50-50 in the middle line. I get a fresh touch because uh, if you do or you don't know, the flags actually, they return on their own if they're left long enough. So you reset the timer. Get back on the map. I think at this point there's maybe what's the clock saying? Oh, well, overshoots just come up. I've just gone forward. Uh, Did they see. got it or? <clears throat> Let me check. Well, it should have been up now. It's up now. It just grappled it. So obviously they have map control. I'm gonna see see here. Chicks just grappled the overshoot back to themselves. So in our perspective, it's like we are on a full defensive. They have overshield. What do we do from this situation? To, to dumb down map control as well on this map, it genuinely means just not crossing this bridge, this line into buildings where your teammates can't help you. If you all stay in this open middle area, the more of you, you kind of you kind of pre-aim them as they come out. So like they're walking into four of you. It's when your teammates cross this line, like as a team, you need to break this line. Okay, now we're going to give up the map to go in for the flag because the map's really defensive. Like you don't get many caps on this map. It do you don't tend to get five O's. Yeah, someone was mentioning earlier as well, like, he, like in normally, like in older past Halos, you would need like two, three dead for a flag cap, but here it's like you need at least, I don't know, you need at least four dead, and then you have to speak about the next wave. So I think it's the only map where you need to kill more than four people sometimes to kill uh, to cap a flag. Well, so we're going to go, probably going so to... Like, we're still we so defensive here. We're just, we're just trying to get enough numbers to us to warrant to go out. Like we're not having I... someone do some like OE to try and make some desperate flag re or anything like that. We're sticking as a unit. Like I know uh, definitely from matchmaking, there's points where you just see someone just spawn. You're like, all right, screw you guys. You can defend it. I'm out. You know, do this and try and make some hero play around this side, which obviously sometimes does work. But it's like Think about how I'm long you're off the is... map as well. You're in a three v four. Yeah, like it's sacrificing and hoping your teammates can you know withstand a a three v four. Or so I know that's quite an often matchmaking strat. Which in our mind, it's like. You know, we're a team. Like, we're not going to... We do this always. Like, we're do some, we're just going to do some hero play to get and out good, of there. And a good team would, like, take that as, a, as an advantage. Yeah, they'll see him right? off yeah. the map, make him irrelevant. And... So, look, we come out in time of rockets. There's three between us. That's the fourth guy. And then this guy gets quite a good spawn. Obviously, that's the in spawn, the defensive spawn that they kind of always want. We kill most... five there and we get the rear. That's the most heavy spawn that they get on their side of the map as well. Um, mainly, they're going to spawn back right on the thrusts. Unless, obviously, you get into their hut and, and they're getting to their tree and you're waiting on the next wave and then they might spawn on the elbow. Mm. So we'll, we'll just, just watch the back again. Well. But... Do we speak about the spawns? Like, there's like, mainly there's three spawns. I don't know. There's like the back right on the thrust. There's Which a... Is what, this guy just got here. Exactly. There's a... Trench, no, there's an elbow spawn, and then there's a brute nade spawn on bottom shotgun right there. Uh, to, to simplify that, there's basically a defensive base spawn, the one at the back. This is the one that we want to break. We want to make them spawn out. If they get the spawn out, they'll spawn shotgun side, which is as far away from their flag as possible. And for some reason, if you're, if you're influencing this spawn as well as the top spawn, they get a blessed spawn and they spawn exactly on our route, which is we don't want to give them this hot spawn. This is we like the best spawn they can have. The best spawn they can get is they can spawn. Look how they spawn literally in map control, top middle, and they can break. So 
what we want to do is we only want to influence the shotgun spawn or the rocket spawn, uh, the the flag spawn at one time. Because if you influence both, they get they get the the golden egg of I spawn next to the guy running the flag. And that's 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 the whole plan. The whole plan is just to break the back one, let them have that free route out if they want it, because we're already going to set up and play for that like further down the line. Mm-hmm. So we finally get the numbers. We finally get the reset here. So what? That was a three, three, four minute standoff off the break where just, every, yeah. and it all stems from like map control, us getting numbers and collapsing quick. And because again we've got this top side, we've blocked that back spawn. You can see the red players. Getting the, the out spawn that we want. It's me. So in my mind is like I'm I'm seeing the fact that we're in the base and I know these spawns are happening. I'm aware that these guys are not spawned and they're based on where uh, I feel like that's respectful and uh, two foxy running it. Um so it's like I'm just playing basically mid map to try and like maintain pressure, knowing that they're most likely gonna be flanking behind me or they're gonna rotate back. That's like one of the things you can do to like get your team out of the map. Like if you see like alright, that's a dead push. Just like try and stay alive for like another 10 or 15 seconds and it will like get your teammates out of the map for the next wave. Okay, this bit here is really good. We spoke about this yesterday as a team. Uh, if you go to my point of view, uh, you see the front uh, respectful goes in a little early, which is kind of, it's good at times because it will give him the next best spawn, which is picking up over, uh, uh, overextend. So us as a free, I bet at this point we'll be telling that player to basically hold our base it sounds crazy, but because we're pushing their base, but we already know two steps ahead that we're now going to push. If it goes well, the next wave is going to be yeah, our side of the map. So as a free, we push up. You'll just see here. We'll... I don't. We keep also have our shield as well. I mean, even though we're a man down, we like we've just killed them off, and we have a fresh over shield. So we can kind of think, like I said, two steps ahead, right? Like we are pushing in with an overshield up to them to either try and defend versus an overshield overextend which is when you know two fox just said then respectful dying it's obviously not the best but it's not bad because he can now cover that overextend that we're predicting to happen because we have an overshield push in their side so yeah, you have 10 second respawns on this game like you have so long to you are already thinking about what your next wave is so here you can see this is that oe that we're worrying about this was the oe that we if we picked it up, like this could have been capable, but yeah. they make it, they get a good opening. We we then realize at this point, oh no, we've actually not picked up our OE, and this this is just a dead cat because look look how far up the map they are. But that's that's the importance of that open lane. It's respecting that's... that open lane, but you still have to like be a part of it. And that could have been a situation that was avoided if the OE was picked up. It's as simple as that. So now they're running a counter cap of their own and now we need to stop it. So look, if from... you go back, back, go back, Jim, towards when we spawn, the exact same scenario happens, but on their front. So at this point, we OE, we're the team that's like, okay, we're not going to defend our base. That's our spawn. Like, look down, how far man. we've spawned. We've spawned on the bad spawn. And when you get that bad spawn, if you go as a team, you can just insta-flip the map. Look, we, we just go... See, no they're thanks. even predicting this OE right here, but like, like I say, Kimbo and Two Foxy have just gone. So but we've beaten them to their own base. We go one for one, which is fine because we can still deal with this cap. And we can't forget, like, we're still like fighting for mid map. Like, all our spawners, like, they get mid map for free right now by us doing this. And obviously, the kills just don't go in our favor here, but Kimbo surviving is just huge. He was buying us so much time. That's the thing, that's like a huge thing on this map, like living is so much bigger than I think they're about to cap a flag here right now as well, right? No, no. This, this is your hero play. You buy oh. them off for so long, you buy so much time. See, this is the, like, yeah. Kimbo just, Kimbo surviving that long literally just stops them because they ran it down double doors. It makes them worry to the point where they won't, they won't make this cross uh, from here to here with this flag because they're aware that he's up there. And it's so hard to kill Kimbo when he's just sitting at this angle trying to stop him. So him stalling so much allows us, like I said, then to come off respawn completely on the other it's side. It's more so the that pace map. that Kimbo plays it. Like he doesn't all in that guy. He doesn't find the he first doesn't person go, and fight them to death. You have to kill me, or it's it's you know I'm here now. You make the decision. Do you want to kill me or do you want to cap this flag? The guy decides to cap the flag. So if you see Kimbo as he goes up the window, he's buying so much time. Like right now, I'm just looking for the flag carry. It's like, like in my head, it's like if I kill the flag carry right now, I can buy like an extra five or ten seconds for my team to come up. So right now, I'm just looking, just trying to catch him off guard. And I think Four I got players him on his screen, and they still 
But maybe they have to kill Kimba, in uh, my opinion. That's why I'm like five seconds more for my team. So another guy who's weak. I think he gets cleaned off by Respectful now. Yeah. And that's like pretty much done here at this point. Because all the players now, they spawn bottom shotgun and there's they no They get way. a bad spawn and then, the, for me, they just, they should overextend straight away. Like, you're never killing two of us here. And again, this is where we're talking, like, okay, we're like, the first time we talked about before, the first time we were talking about the OE, and um, we were on the flag, uh, like, two minutes ago, obviously, Respectful went through mid-map instead of covering the OE, right? And we didn't get the flag. Now, this time on, on the next time round, he's covering the OE. Uh, and yeah, obviously the battle lost by but obviously Kimbo's there to clean up. But it's we have the info. Early, it's the info. Yeah. Like, we killed one, there was two there. We killed one mid, one one shot, Robbie cleaned him up. Yeah, like, and you know the rest of them are either going to fight mid map or carry an OE, right? But because Respectful covered that OE, it basically secures that whole route for the flag guy right here. But I think again, we were, we talked about this before, and obviously we learned on this one, we were like, oh, we we're basically. Two minds with yeah. obviously map control and OS or a cap, but. I don't know, we're, we're kind of bizarre for us as a team. We feel like the caps, like now that we've actually had a bigger discussion, like after this game, we feel like the, the cap is bigger than the, the weapons because if you cap the flag, if they push you for the weapons, you still have the chance to stop it. Whereas if you want to play for the weapons, you still have to do a, It's almost like we can just cap the flag. That's one thing to do. Instead, we look, we play for power up and then cap the flag. It's two things we have to do. Because so, O-Shield and Rockets are both coming up in 10 seconds. We spoke about this yesterday as a team. We like we broke this down. Uh, Kimbo comes off spawn. So if you go back to when he initially spawns, uh, just after this. So at this point, we're running the flag over the middle. We're giving them the bad spawns. If Kimbo, instead of coming into the map, as you see, I'm running the flag below him, actually just helps me get the flag in. I think it's is it the next wave. No, he comes uh, back and oh, yeah, so this bit, kill and then comes back around. So when he when he, he finishes this guy, and I feel like he should just stay here, because as you can see, I'm the green player in front of him brings yeah. it in. Uh, he can help me pick up the OE because you see, I get to my flag and I'm like, oh, like there's a guy here, and then because Kimbo's made the call to play for Overshield, we've almost had to just concede a flag. He does get quite a good time and try to get back in. Well, we were looking at his end, happens, like, for so. some reason, Chick doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't just insure it. I feel like Chick just returns the flag when he sees me. It was a bit misplay for them as well. So it's a misplay on both like, fronts, but yeah. we still get the, the cap. But um, obviously, we've we've said that like bizarre caps don't come often. Like, I feel like you should force a cap over forcing weapons. I'd rather cap a flag and defend against weapons than than have weapons and not have the flag. And you're the team at the yep. And even Again. From, from my perspective on this, this is we've gone back here. I've thrown the flag out. In my perspective right here, as this I is think we spoke about it yesterday, run. I could have ran this flag uh, instead of two Foxy. But it's better. We, we kind of have this mindset where it's better to have someone holding back. Because uh, um, in my opinion, you can't really run a flag off of like one set of fresh slaves, right? We killed, you know, majority of them here, got the re... It, we can't really run the flag from here all the way to our base with just killing them once, right? So it's like... Kind of throw out mid map, see what they're doing, whether they're full or they're extending, or they're trying to wrap back through pillars and bar to try and get a shot on the flag guy. So it's best to kind of have someone standing here behind the flag guy to kind of cover yeah, as well even, as Even to simplify that more, basically we kill their base, we give it to the middle, and we want to see where they go. Do they use the lane that we've given them, an OE, or do they want to wrap back and fight us on our front? So why to, to simplify what Jimbo's saying is basically he's gonna linger on the front to see what they do first. So why, the, the reason he says it should have been him running, it was it was his run. He threw it down. And then I was like, okay, there's no one here. We're just going to go. Like, just was slightly quicker. And then Jimbo, Jimbo the runner, then becomes the front, if that makes sense. So like, I'm seeing them overextend. So I'm like, oh, we're good. We're good. They're like, You've only got one guy on you. But again, like, he's, he's, if you look at it here, Kimbo, uh, Jimbo is literally holding the whole map on his own. Cause if I die right here, Kimbo most likely doesn't get this power up. Even a respectful does spawn them because they've a weed. But in my mind, it's just survive. I don't need to commit to a battle. I can put damage down. Like you've took two off the map here. And it gives us an opening to then actually just get back onto the map. So it's like, obviously, they're there in this decision of do they desperate to try and get a touch or, or to get the recarve. Yeah, everything basically was just not going their way from how we maintained our lives and like controlled the map there. Like obviously Kimbo got uh, 
Overshield went back. Two of them just died on the double doors of the final two, and we killed two on their side. So it's like we're basically forcing it's a bit messy them to on make... their front as well because yeah. they've two OE to two wrapped, and it's like how can they help each other when they're not all playing for the same thing? Mm -hmm. But we we still scrap that flag. We get one. Also, we have ro rockets and Overshield, and like we said, they're like if you want to get kills in Halo, like you just gotta get power weapons. It's like, yeah, I could have committed into that treehouse then and just, like, tried to put damage down uh, after getting <clears> these <throat> kills. But it's, again, it's like, my mindset is, like, maintain map control. Obviously, the trades, I could have done a lot more, like, a lot better with those rockets as a whole. Yeah, we killed all four of them, I'm pretty sure. But we still don't really have map control, right? And I've just survived. So it's like, yeah, I could go and try and fight a 1v1 right here. Obviously, notice that I'm half shield, haven't even hit Bill on him. So I'm just like, okay, I need to get out and just stay alive. That's the play that you these. see about. 80 times a game in matchmaking where you've done the you've done the hard bit by keeping them out. If you wait five seconds, your whole team, you get an army turn up. Yeah. And me putting they damage down to line. this guy still leaves us in a 4v3. Whereas me surviving, out. I'm I may be one shot, but I'm still something they have to worry about. That's good. Look, the whole gameplay is and just us keeping the map as long as we can. You should have just lived there. <laughs> I'm like talking about how I survived so much and then I go and challenge in one shot. So you know. Not all perfect. So right now, this is like fighting for mid map again. Yeah, the, the whole game, the whole map yeah. is just fighting for the middle, especially in, like, in flag in general. In Slayer, it's a lot more slower. Like you tend to stay in your base a bit more, and you try and coerce them into yeah. your base. You'll find a lot of bizarre games are quite low. Ca like when two good teams play against each other, they're always kind of close games, low capped games. It rarely makes it to five flags, um, just because the majority of the time is spent getting map control for the next wave, and then the wave after that. And obviously, if you don't win the next wave, once you've got control, you go a wave back, and you've got to repeat again. So you d you know, the games can be very long, and they can go the time distance quite often. It's like. Uh, like loads of steps you have to do to cap a flag. It's like making sure your side is clear, then going for the mid map, and then pushing the other base, you know? And then, and you then have to forcing do that. the spawn that you want. Exactly. And then you have to do like a couple of those steps again, like on the way back, capping the flag. So that's probably like what Respectful meant. That's why it takes so long. And that's why you really see like, I don't know, a 5 or something on this. It's pretty much impossible. You have to really mess up for a 5 -0. But yeah. here we can actually see it when you kind of block both spawns. So you see Frago, obviously, this is from their perspective. Frago is now pushing our treehouse. Uh, and then you also have, uh, is a chick also pushing this elbow side, right? Which is influencing this spawn. And you see that two foxy actually got this back left spawn, which is, it's it's not like a main spawn point, but it's like a secondary spawn point. Obviously, we mentioned the three kind of main ones, and it's the same on both sides, right? You have this back spawn here, you have this low elbow spawn here, or you have the shotgun spawn. Now, because this chick player here has pushed this side, it's kind of influencing both this spawn down here and this spawn here. So it forces two fox into kind of like a secondary spawn, um, which is like, I think, poor on their behalf, right? Although it does actually work out in their favor a little bit to kill two foxy, but you can see how pushing the wrong spawn points actually kind of messes them up a bit here. Uh, let me get the fragger's perspective. But... It just shows it's just how. messy because you need to yeah. keep your numbers up the map. Like when, like you're like going one for one on their side is so bad because look how far away you spawn to then get here again. It's like yeah, they do end up like kind of come back together to get each other, but like they could have been so much cleaner. They've got to deal with me, and I go one for one on the I think the bar guy, which is one less of their numbers on their way back. So now they've only got three players to try and get this flag back. Kimbo's just, buying time as well. The whole time we're just messing with them on our side. I'm pretty sure Kimbo spawns there. That's how messed the spawns get. Yeah, Kimbo spawns there. This is again, a, like this is like a like a tertiary spawn. Like, this is such a rare spawn because of how much they're influencing. We look. This, we're spawning with them in between them. It's messy. They're not pushing us together. Like, even if they kill us here, like we've killed one, two. There's their last guy. Like, how's this guy going to get it out into the middle? It's by then, like, we've already spawned. At this point, me and Respect, I've come off again. I'm off and spawn again. Me and Respect are now fighting for the middle. Like, all they did there, they have to do it again pretty much in the middle map. Like, that's all we were speaking earlier. It's That's why this map is just so hard. We're saying you have to kill, like, usually about two waves to get a flag run, right? These guys have killed two us already twice pretty much already and the flag's there and we still managed to get to overshot the mid map like you can see how kind of like 
That's a good, that's horrendous. a quick run from them, but I, I still don't think they cap it with the buddies we have. So I think they've made the same mistake before, right? They go double doors with it. No, they grappled the flag in. That's why they got so in. fast with it. No. Oh, did he do like a... Oh, the... That's why they got it quick, you mean? Yeah, like they use the grapple technique to get across the map quite quick. I quite think he does it twice, to be honest. I think he then grapples to get like a super slide. Yeah, you can see it here. Fair play. Even then, just the flag coming down doubles. It's just like, I don't know. You just see it twice, I think. The flag comes down doubles and we'd stop it's it. It's just the lack of bodies they have. The whole time they're fighting numbers down. They're forcing caps. Like, look, look we're all over their base. Like... Oh, this is one. We'll go to first person for this one. I just Three feel like bullets. he caps the flag there. Like, the, if you go back when he climbs it up. Yeah, like, he, like the, even the first time when he climbed it up, he could have thrown it up to his teammate. Like, there's no reason his team shouldn't have capped the flag in this scenario. Obviously, that's just then re it, so it's like... And then they get the outspawn. Do they rap? Or do they... And they rap and they feed us, like... Anyways, we're uh, looking at if we go floors. back, go back to when they actually extend it, we'll just look at it from the bigger picture. When we get to their flag, when I kill Chick on their base to stop their pull, they actually make a swipe, quite a smart play and full OE to our side. They, they, I remember this, don't they like half do it? SLG goes and then no, the rest no, no. Of them don't. So basically they 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 play in the bad side here. They they've like that player is quite smart and just realized like they, I'm different. never getting back in time. I'll go do something else. We win the battles on their side. Uh, SLG. I, I, That's what I'm saying. He like needs he to just go all the way. Like he goes all the way for the flag. Went to battle on our side, and again, because we're we're almost beating them so much on the top side. They they feel like they have to go the low side. You stay on SLG. They play the bad side, and at this point, we're like we're playing for map control. We go to respectful now. Like, they still have to come through us here. He gets rockets, and like we said, they're the easy skills in the game. He stops their run. I think even SLG throws it out again and just plays... Like, he plays the kill By all means, he's got sandbox and weapons to hold for his run, but the run isn't happening because we've got the map. Obviously, we, we spoke about this as well. I could have then run through their run, but two minutes left. We've got everything. That like, Let's just keep the map, keep slaying. Like so many we're looking at again. SLG. The whole time we're looking at SLG on our side, right? Two Fox is basically doing the same thing, right? He's thrown it out, so he lets them know that obviously they know he's there because we've survived from the previous push, but he kind of like cuts if, off. If you pause here, they, they have to come through respectful of rockets. You see to the right. They have to come through. If they want to play this lane, they have to come through me and respectful and the rockets. Like that side isn't really a thing, like in our opinion, unless you get good, good numbers and a good timing, but. It's this map, it's all about map control, and you don't get sneaky caps. It's not like like older Halo. One there, yeah, one dead, and then you just fast run it, like, and somehow you get it if your teammates back. It doesn't work like that. See, because... look, we're getting bad spawns here. We're going to use the bad spawns and fight for their sides together as a team. But we've brought two back. Like, how are they going to pull a flag when we've brought two back again? So they think they've just killed the OE when I'm just like. Basically, just trying to disappear. I think that's Kimbo as well. That's free, like two back again. Like half their team is on our side. Oh yeah, but go back a little bit. I think we played this pretty well, you know. If you want to go to my POV, I was like, "All right, Pest died. It's only me and you, Jim, on this side. Let's buy some time again, you know, like we did earlier." I think we just you can do this pretty well on this map because, like, how many corners are there on this map? They have to check to get to their flag. If you have to be honest. Mm. But you like, see like, how it's like not even. It's not just one of us always. It's like, okay, we are committing to this OE. Like, obviously, two foxes survived, right? But we spawned down low, respectful alive from the previous life, or he's still back down there with rockets, right? Me and Kimbo are just like, okay, two foxes out. Let's support this OE and play it as a unit instead of, like, trying to make these hero plays mid-map or something like that. So right here, I remember, I was like, yo, let's just play their side, wait for our boys to turn up. So we hide, don't show, and then this will be by some time then. So just just think from their perspective how annoying this is. You've got half the other team is in your own base, like. 
and we got two of them as well. They're literally like fighting for their base like in the last two minutes. Like they have to cap a flag here, you can't forget. So they literally got three flags back to their side of the map just because we like took initiative and got ahead of it. But it just goes to show how hard it is to cap the flags on this game if you, on this map specifically, if you just don't recognize the spawns and play appropriately them to them. Like they ran three flags to their side and didn't get a single one of them just because of how like scattered out they are and how uh, quick we were on making our decisions of whether we're OEing or we're playing mid map or anything like that. Um, and you know, obviously we had, I think we had three runs and we capped two of them. One of them, what did we cap both of them actually? We capped two. We capped two, two yeah. I don't remember if we ran a third and it was a That third one time I should have, uh, actually no, that was when we should have watched the OE, yeah. A good point that a lot of people need to pick up on is if it was too easy to get across that middle bit and they're all alive, you're in for something like soon. Like, mm. it's not like they've just conceded, like, they're in your base. Like, if you got through this bit, this middle part of the map from your window to their window and it was hard, then and you won it, it's probably a cap. But if you got across this middle bit and it was easy and you haven't seen them, they're probably in your base. It's just process of elimination of like, what are they doing? Unless they've literally put their equipment down and don't want to play anymore. Like, they're probably... The yeah. fight's coming later than you expect. So even, even here, right, they're running the flag. They have overshield. Um, and you can kind of say map control. Yeah, it's yeah Can you go back a little bit? Uh, play, play that from my POV. I think I... I don't know. I'm not sure if I stopped that, actually. But well, if, even the whole point I'm looking at this is, like, this is a different point when we defend the flag. They have overshield. And we're not doing an OE play. We haven't OE'd. Like, Respectful could have OE'd here, right? And just, like, dipped and, and gone and made this hero play around here, right? But you can kind of he can kind of see that, you know, we are, uh, you know, trying to get map control. I've just come off respawn. Uh, Kimbo's in the bar. And then I think two Foxy spawns back right over there. And we, we're kind of, like, playing for map. Even though they got overshield and they're running the flag, we're not doing some hero play. Okay, no mud. No, no, he cuts back in. <laughs> he cuts back. Okay, he's not doing a full OE. It's, it's literally just because he's weak. Which is, you know, that's fine, right? He's still playing for the mid map. He may have just gone down that route, but he's still playing for the mid map. And it just shows how, even though they've got overshield, they're still running a flag. So it's kind of like, it's a 4v3 because they're running the flag, even though they got overshield. Yeah, that's another point that a lot of players don't really pick up on is if a guy's holding a flag, he literally hasn't got his gun in his hand and you play like they're one dead. Yeah. Like the same with Oddball, the same with Strongholds. Like in Stronghold, like a lot of these like modes the game literally tells you like, gives you like information of where the player is and you can use that information and a lot of people don't like oddball the it's telling you where one guy is at all times you get live feed like use the info mm. so we use the info that they're running the flag so we 4v3 middle here respectful puts damage down middle makes a small flank and then comes back on the map he doesn't fully overextend so like while he's weak, like why why challenge and take a risk? Use that time to make ground. Because think, if you go back to Shad spawn here, you gotta think from their perspective, uh, when Shad comes off spawn, they're desperate to get a cap. Pause it here. The last time this guy's been told where respectful is, he thinks that these are that pillars in front of him. So like he's trying to get look, he's playing for respectful. Respectful isn't there anymore. And then respectful's the guy that kills him. Like, you're playing yeah. off death screens, you're playing off info, like, this whole... That's where the Halo IQ kind of comes onto this map. It's 2v2s and just, like, your 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 own skill in terms of, like, playing for the same areas together. Mm. I think even, even though it's, like, a minute 24 left in the game, I think once we got that relay, they actually just ended it because it was, like... I don't know. It was a bit of rage coming to there. But you can see how they ended it, but... I mean, you, you can see as a whole how different flag situations can be played but as long as you're all on the same page it works out so and then let's let's literally talk about it now as if like uh what you should be using to get out of your base so like in our base we have a frost and ar which can then play for the tree yeah we can double up on certain areas of the map we can post up like how you want to defend and how you want to break so i don't know if brand you want to talk about like yeah so sometimes um, base, basically sometimes when not off spawn now because off spawn I don't even no, go no, for just, the just literally just dumb it, pure dumb it down to like here's some tips for like breaking out of your base what you should be looking for oh yeah so if you've uh, say for instance you want to break out of your base at any point in the game 
there, um, there's a guy in your hut. If you go and get your thrust, uh, which is on the right of your spawn, on red side, the left of your spawn, on blue side, if you go get your thrust and assault rifle, if you know there's a guy in your hut and your teammates are distracting him, slash the other players, keeping your attention off him, you can just go in there, get a thrust beat down, and get a guy off the map. And then you play a 3v4 scenario, you can get to their hut with the extra number of uh, players that you have, and then you can kind of do stuff from there to help your team get up the map, because you're in a good anchor position, and then you can play for the next wave and play for a potential flag cap um so also not only is the frost and the ar a good way to like break out your base um you see in the front of our base there's there's two big rooms obviously the height comes with the rooms obviously close quarters not a lot of the middle not a lot of the middle of the map can actually see you so if they want to come in here we want to try and get numbers in here before they get numbers in here so if we come off spawn and we know that they're pushing us we may try and put two of our bodies into bar because we've got a 2v2 scenario where they're coming into us. We use those numbers to get out the map. Uh, not only that, we've got, like we said, with the thrust, but uh, we can also use the, the lower part of the map. Obviously, we don't talk about the mangler anymore. We just, you, you basically just got to, you just got to make life as hard as possible for them to cap. Like, use the walls, shoulder and the walls if you are challenging. Obviously, sliding on this game is like really broken. If you wide slide, it's hard to actually hit you. But yeah, uh, you don't want to be easy kills. You don't want to be giving them numbers. Because the hard part of the game is supposed to be this fight in the middle. You don't want to make the hard part defending your base when they're walking into you. So like a big tip for, I genuinely say, is you need to get your thrusts and use your numbers and just buy as much time. Because... Bad plays do happen, but it's buying enough time to let that player get back into the map and not... So say say Kimbo pushes into our tree, he doesn't get the Frost, and he fights a guy with a Frost, he's never going to win it. Frost is just... It's broken. Uh, so at that point, we wouldn't then go and fight in the map 3v4. It's, it's reading the minimap. Uh, one big thing that we did speak about is if you're bad at reading the minimap, there's literally a setting in the game to make the font bigger. You cannot miss... Mm, there it is right here. Text size. You cannot miss how Look big the font is. If you, if you, if can't, you really can't see, you can put this one on. But. but yeah, there's plenty of things that, and obviously when you get the map, that's getting out of your base, getting out of your map. You want to use the sandbox to your to your advantage. OS rockets, they're the easy kills. And then after that point, you don't want to cross that that like seventy yard line, seventy yards, seventy percent line. You want to buy time, get your numbers, because it's all about flushing them out together. And blue nades, obviously. These are your best friends on this map. Slayer and flag. Because you get map, you eat them in there, it lets you know they're in here. You eat them in there, it lets you know they're in there. There's an instant kill on here when they're sat in this corner. Yeah, I just eat two it's in so... there. There's okay, the medium, the medium effect setting as there. well, Jimbo. The, the mm. medium effect setting that a lot of players should use. Oh, like... yeah, so I think for a lot of people who are not on console, um, and play on low settings, you can... I think one of the main things, is another kind of sneaky tip onto, I guess, is you go to your video settings, you can actually uh, change the effects quality. I don't know why that one's on that. Uh, change the effects quality to medium, and that will actually allow you to see the chain of the nade, uh, the lightning kind of effect on these nades. Um, if you have it on low, you, you basically It's almost like you throw, the, you throw the grenade at someone, and if it's affecting someone, it will give you an electric arrow to almost where they are. So it's just another thing that some players may not be using. Yeah, Bizarre's Bizarre quite a simple one. It's it's a super team game where it's attack almost versus defense. You're never attacking and defending at the same time. It's both teams kind of know what's happening at the same time. It's they're pushing us. Okay, we're defending. Okay, we won the defense. Now it's a 50-50 where both teams are kind of attacking. Whoever wins gets them to take their window. And then if, say, if we take their window, now they're defending against us. It's kind of like waves going back and forth in terms of who actually gets it out. And then, obviously, there's the overextend option that if teams don't pick it up, there's a free route to their base. Because, obviously, there's an underground route all the way through. Yeah. And shotgun is also there on your route, which is really good on this game. Once you get shotgun, first person can get your spike needs, second person can get their spike needs. You know, you basically get a, a full set of gear to try and, like, you know, defend yeah, you get the loaded up to, to try and fight in their base. And if they don't want to defend their base, then they have to come back to us. I feel like we've broken it down quite well in terms of yeah. using your sandbox, defending when you should be attacking, 
using your numbers in the right area. Obviously, a big issue of a lot of players is obviously not getting enough sandbox. Like Frost will always beat a non-Frost. Doesn't matter. Like in a pure head-to-head, -head, it doesn't matter if you're the best player in the world. A guy missing two free shots will probably kill someone with a Frost because it's so good on this game. And then, and then obviously grapple, putting the navy spot in there is a good way to get a lot of height. Okay, well, I guess that will kind of cover up our whole rundown of Bizarre Flag more specifically. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this kind of a bit more in-depth uh, talk towards the map, you know, kind of reviewing the footage from our, our scrims um, and obviously just seeing some tips and tricks and different things you can think about when playing this map next time. Um, obviously, matchmaking is kind of tough sometimes with people the way that people play it, but you can kind of see when people are making bad plays and good plays and how much of an impact doing everything as a team can be on this um if you guys did enjoy this kind of video from us and would like to see kind of more in-depth tips and tricks obviously please let us know in the comments down below um you know we're more than happy to to look at doing all these different uh, kind of videos to so try and help out everyone else and and kind of give more of an in-depth insight towards us as players and what we're what, you know what we're thinking of and what we're doing um but yeah i hope you guys did enjoy and uh we'll see you at kansas yes see you Thanks. at kansas Peace out.